you know, there's still a lot of room to utilize AI for fraud management, risk risk management, uh, even in terms of marketing stuff. Although I'll tell you, I, I'm not sort of real optimistic that AI is going to be this silver bullet magic thing that's going to help us provide all this great advice. And I think in the shorter term, the, the role of AI for, for financial institutions uh, will, will find its way in to a lot of areas other than sort of financial health and, 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 and financial health measurement. You know, there's still a lot of room to utilize AI for fraud management, risk, risk management, uh, even in terms of marketing stuff. Although I'll tell you, I, I'm not sort of real optimistic that AI is going to be this silver bullet magic thing that's going to help us provide all this great advice that we're going to deliver through through AI. But there's a lot of, of functional areas within banking that will be able to make use of AI, even within IT function itself, uh, long before it makes its way into marketing and financial health. Well, just in general, with the financial health and improving the financial health score, if we as consumers are becoming much more reliant on technology to tell us what to do with our money, are there any downsides to that? Yeah, there, you know, we have to take a step back and recognize that, you know, very high level, and, I, and this is very kind of generic, there, there tends to be, you know, three types of people out there. Those that kind of want to do it all themselves, they're going to willing to do the work. They're, these are the people who've been using, you know, in, Intuit for the, you know, to manage their money and, you know, for the past 20 years, that kind of stuff. And, and there's people who, you know, are very self-directed, willing to do the work. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum are those that just say, well, well, go do it for me. And, you know, they're, they, you know, from an investment perspective, you know, they work with advisors who just do it all. Um, and now, thanks to some of the democratization of some of these tools uh, and, you know, bringing it down to a lower cost point, you know, like, again, I mentioned some of the savings tools like digit and capital that just move your money. Or, you know, you get some of these robo advisors that just, okay, we'll, we'll, We'll make it money, and the, there are people who do it. But there's this middle group that's really being overlooked. You know, they're they're kind of like collaborators. They're not totally self-directed, and neither are they totally delegators. They they want help. They they do want to do some of the work, but recognize that they either can't or won't do all of the work, uh, and they're not comfortable just turning it over to somebody else. And so there needs to be kind of this middle ground. And here's where AI can help is, you know, have you seen the, you know, these chat bots that tend to be more customer service oriented these days, but we need to kind of combine the customer service type chat bot with the robo advisor type chat bot. You know, today robo advisor is not a chat bot. It's really a, it's just really algorithm driven. It's, hey, let's, you know, go figure out where you should be investing and just go do it. Uh, but that doesn't allow for somebody to say, well, why? And what if I don't want all of that? And, you know, what about this? And how do you feel about that? So we need some, you know, AI can really kind of provide some better service to this middle group who really want to be more collaborative in the management of their financial lives versus either totally self-directed or totally delegating. Mm -hmm.